Welcome back to another episode of Friday Sews. It's episode seven. Now, I know last week I said it's episode five by mistake. So I'm really sorry about that. I think the reason I made the mistake is because uh, I'd been asked a couple of questions on my episode five video and I wrote a note to episode five and a couple of things. So I think when I put that in front of me and I went to film, I think I got it into my head. It was episode five five but it was abs uh, it was actually episode six so I'm really sorry about that if it caused any confusion I'm currently I've wrote some notes here so I'm hopefully I can keep on track I'm currently starting to film this Monday the 12th of April it's still April isn't it yeah so um and the first note I've made about the mistake on which episode it was last week but it doesn't make a big difference does it really I suppose and um I just and I've put a note here to basically thank everybody that commented for the feedback that you don't mind me showing different crafts on Friday so so uh, that's much appreciated maybe there's some of you that would prefer not to see it but you were nice enough not to say anything <laughs> <laughs> but thank you for that as well so uh what I, and another mistake i've wrote a note to this of another mistake i made was when i was showing you my easter things i don't know if any of you spotted it uh basically i was showing you those cre um christmas i'm always saying christmas easter pyramids that i made that you they were like a little pyramid and you open them out and you put an egg inside them and they were like fabric and then they are um i think I think Gail Pan designed them, but they're basically, you get uh, the pattern through daisy chain design. And when I was showing you one of them, I'd said that I'd made it in Peter Pan fabric. I don't know if you noticed that, but you may have noticed it wasn't Peter Pan fabric. It was Peter Rabbit. So, and I didn't even notice that until I'd like finalised all the video and it was all up on YouTube. I didn't notice it and I wasn't going to have to, I'd have had to, you know, redo it all. So no, <laughs> so I'm afraid I left but I don't know if anybody noticed that anyway and one thing I wanted to show you I watched my last video back and I showed you my snowdrops dome but I hadn't taken a photograph of it then but I looked at the video and it didn't you didn't really see it very well so I've taken a photograph of that now you might have seen this already on Instagram so I'll pop that photograph on now so you can kind of see the snowdrop dome a little bit better so there you go now what I've noticed I haven't wrote a note of this actually it's just uh, made me realize remember me saying uh, if you buy the spring dome kit from Mandy, that there's only some of the um, dome stitched up on the front picture so if you don't want to do those ones and you want to do other ones you kind of have to come up with your own colors which is nice but if you are struggling for ideas i was looking for something else mandy's um site um i ended up looking on her social media and i, ha I came across some of her domes and she's actually posted photographs of domes that aren't on that front picture so if you were struggling to get ideas i don't think all of them are on pictures but you might be able to get a little bit of inspiration from mandy if you know because i do i totally get that it can be difficult can't it to have that vision sometimes and sometimes sometimes you don't want to have to give it too much thought and you just want to make something don't you so that's always an option if you're struggling to come up with your own colors yeah and another thing is i've been able to stitch more domes remember me saying you don't get enough domes in them i'm going to be able to make more domes than you would be able to in the kit because i had some domes already that i bought from mandy back when she started doing them i did basically eight uh in a row i think i did like one every night and uh, i haven't done any since the snow drop I've kind of I haven't done any hand stitching since then actually there you go excuse me I'm just gonna have a sip a sip of my coffee <laughs> lovely I've got a um cafe au lait it's a Dolce Gusto cafe au lait in my Emma Bridgewater mug actually I've got something to say about this mug actually but I'll get, get to that further down my list now what have I got right another big thing today in the UK um we've had some restrictions lifted today so um essential shops have been open but non-essential shops have been closed but as of today 
I think you can see a hairdresser. I think. Oh, I'm not booked in with a hairdresser just yet. And uh, what else can you? And non-essential shops can uh, be out are open basically so because i follow a lot of craft people they've been sharing all their things about oh we're opening the shop we can't wait to see you all and everything and uh, my most local um haberdashery that's associated with dressmaking is guthrie and garney it's about 20 minutes away in Mosley and uh, they're not opening today. I saw a little bit of um, Lauren, I think she did like some Instagram live. I, didn't, I don't always watch people's lives because it's just getting the time to do it all the time. And you know, and it tempts you to buy things, doesn't it? You know, when you know you've got things you could be using and you don't really want to buy anymore. So uh, yeah, she said they're not opening. So I'm not desperate for anything dressmaking at the, anyway at the moment. But, um, I haven't found out about the cotton patch they're my most local quilting shop but i don't actually need anything patchwork and quilting anyway uh but I, my idea is i might venture off to hobby craft today oh I, I really i think I'll, that's where i'd like to go because i might get some watercolor paper on. and i want to look for a pen um you can get porcelain pens and you can get porcelain brush pens basically and um, and that you'll draw it on I think you bake it in the oven then it's permanent so, so I can write my own name in calligraphy style on that side and then underneath I'm going to have a look now I know I can get what I want and in the colour I want online I've already seen it but I'm going to see if Hobbycraft have got it in store and if they have great if not I'll come back and I'll order it online so I'm just going to have another sip and then we're going to go to a bit of soaking. It's exciting. I think that was a big gulp, actually. I think I was <laughs> feeling rather thirsty. Right, exciting. Poppy to fry project. It's the final week of Poppy to Fry's uh, Spring Embroidery Club, her, her third club, basically. Now, I told you it was going to be a beach bag. I've already shown you a photograph of the supplies we're going to need. That's what it looks like. But um, I had the kit, didn't I, with things you need. The only thing I've had to buy along the way that wasn't included was a cushion inner for last week, which it was a little bit unfortunate because I'd... I'd forgotten what the project was going to be last week and I kept it a surprise to myself and didn't worry and then I realised I needed a cushion so I had to order one like an express delivery kind of thing because I didn't want to make it and then not have a cushion and then I was worried that the cushion wasn't even going to fit because of my one the fabric was wonky do you remember me saying in my last video the fabric was wonky I had to trim it down and then I did the French seams and what it is on all of these poppy projects poppy never tells you what seam allowance she uses in her projects so when you're doing something where you're going to be stuffing a cushion you do are oh, thinking i hope this is going to be okay i looked at poppy um and i thought well it looks like i think it looks like on some of the things she uses about half an inch that's what it looks like to me visually so i kind of thought well if i did my french seams a quarter of an inch and then a quarter of an inch that adds up to half an inch and it should be okay but obviously I had to bear in mind mine was smaller because I had to cut then the yellow piece of fabric down but I've just got a really you know plump cushion which is nice so anyway so the the project came through and I'll show you a photograph of it and it's a beach bag so I'm going to pop Poppy's photographs of it now and it's absolutely lovely isn't it and I got all excited about it and I thought oh great we can do some lettering and everything and then I started to have a few doubts about if I wanted to make it and it was because I made a beach bag um you know back I think it might have well last year basically summertime last year and it was the Mandy Shaw Brighton bag I've mentioned this bag recently I'll pop a photograph of it of my husband modeling it and maybe I'll pop a photograph of me modeling it. if you notice the photograph of my husband and the photograph of me the bag looks absolutely huge with me holding it but my husband it doesn't look huge at all but my husband is very tall 
and I'm quite small, I'm not five foot four, so uh, yeah, I'm a lot smaller, I'm quite, you know, I'm verging on petite, aren't I, so, <laughs> so yeah, it looks a lot bigger than me, so I really like that bag, and it's only really been on one trip, one weekend to Brighton, and I was looking forward to taking it to Cornwall, so then I was kind of doubting if I wanted this bag, but then somebody, now do you remember me saying, if, um, that we've got a private Facebook group, the pop embroidery club members are in now that we get the projects on saturday morning and by the end of saturday there's people have made these projects already now we'll admit there wasn't there was some bags i was out saturday and then I had a few, my husband had to go to the bank, I had to go to Boots and things. So we was out in the afternoon and uh, I didn't look on the, the private Facebook group in the morning. By the time I got back in the afternoon, there was a couple of bags on there. So I wasn't surprised. And somebody had put the rubber ring on it, the, the life boy and put a seagull standing on top of it. Now, what had happened, the way they'd done it, the, uh, the life boy, the bottom of it had kind of disappeared into the bottom of the bag to get the seagull standing up on it. But I really liked the idea of doing a seagull and it was kind of like winning me over about doing this bag. And then somebody else posted one and they'd done the life boy where it should be and they'd done a tiny little seagull in the corner and I must admit, because I like, you know, animals and birds and things, these seagulls were kind of winning me over on you know my desire to do the bag but at the same time do you know when you don't really I don't really like copying people do you know what I'm I don't want to copy people exactly or anything so I thought oh and then it was kind of putting a damper on it then because I was thinking oh gosh you know what I need to like get my design head on so I thought well there's two sides to the bag isn't there so I thought I'm going to have a bit of fun now, with uh, now, what I think I've seen people do in the group, and that's no disrespect to anybody, but some people maybe it's because they haven't been doing it very long sometimes they have go wild doing all this embroidery, and then when they do the construction some of their embroidery disappears because the construction makes it disappear now you really have to give it a lot of thought when you're doing free motion embroidery about your placement of things so what i've done so i didn't have the same problem before i thought what design am i going to do i drew out the, were the denim piece on paper and this is it now i'm just letting you know um i filmed this part of the video earlier today and um the paper was really rattling around and i thought gosh i really need to refilm that so if you wonder if i'm looking a bit different bit disheveled and whatever but yeah it's later in the day so, so what i've done is i've got um a pin board and I'm just going to film this bit of video again with it on here. So what I did, I drew out the size of what the fabric piece should be on paper, basically. And I drew what the seam allowance, I think, should be. Now, Poppy, I don't know if you know this already, but Poppy never gives us seam allowances. So I just drew half an inch on the sides and the bottom. Then you have to take into consideration you're going to do a box corner. So I drew a 45 degree angle on that corner on the left side and, and the right side. And Poppy says we're going to box the corners eight centimetres. So I measured eight centimetres and made a dot. I just want to point out when I measured the eight centimetres, I measured it from that corner up to there on a 45 degree angle. I know when I said that in my video, I didn't make that clear. So I don't want you to think you measure from there. You measure from the seam allowance, that eight centimetres, because that's what you'll be measuring from when it's constructed. Then from that dot, I did a horizontal line and a vertical line. And then I knew if I did that both sides, between there and there, that's where I can embroider because that's going to disappear underneath there and that's going to disappear around the side. Now regarding the top, 
I took into consideration half an inch seam where I'd be sewing it to the lining and we're going to be flipping the on this particular bag we're going to be flipping some of the outside on the inside which is a centimetre so I took into consideration that so I transferred that then onto my denim so I knew what I was working with right I'll send you back to the original bit of video now <laughs> what I did on, on my fabric I took that into consideration so what I did with this I put this on my fabric, I folded that, right, so I put that to the top, I folded that and then I drew a chalk line at the bottom of my fabric, then I straightened it out on the top and I drew, and I drew those lines on my fabric as well and I did it with the side. So I ended up with a rectangle in chalk on my design showing me where I can work to so I'm sorry if this is a bit of waffle. Here it is when I drew all my chalk pieces on. So that's can taken into consider my box corner. So that will go around the back. That will be at the bottom. And here, I don't know why I've drew that line. I don't think I need it. Basically, that's my half an inch seam allowance. And that's the turnover. So, and I've wrote top. So that will be the top of my bag. So I know I've got that to play with, basically. So that's going to be one side. So I've started, excuse me, uh, scratching my nose. I've started sticking some pieces on. So my seagull doesn't look like the seagull in the people in the people's group. I've took a bit of inspiration actually from another designer, and the other designer, surprise, surprise, is Mandy Shaw. Now Mandy Shaw has got a seagull. Now, I will admit I haven't got this pattern, but I had a look at Mandy Siegel, looked at it, kind of done a similar, I really like the shape of it, but I've added extra on it. I've put like um, a wing on it and things to kind of make it my own and I've done the placement a bit different. So here it is. So that's my seagull and I've pla I haven't placed the seagull on top of the uh, rubber ring like somebody has done. I've put it there because I want my rubber, my life boy basically to be in view on my bag. So that's where it says top there, look. So the top of the bag will be there and the way the bottom of the bag will be, it will be there. So I'm going to see all of that, which is nice. No disrespect to the lady that has disappeared underneath. She might have wanted it to disappear underneath, but I didn't want mine. Anyway, I've been in the group since, right? And do you know what? Do you know when you think you've got an idea of your own and then someone else does it? Somebody else has put their seagull, put, done a seagull and placed it standing there. And I thought, oh gosh, now nah, it's going to look like I've copied, but I didn't copy. Um, I just saw what a lady had put one on top of it. And then a lady put a little one on the side and I thought, oh, well, I want mine. And and then somebody else probably thought the same. But rest assured, their seagull looks very different to mine. So they're not going to look the same. So that's all well and good, isn't it? So so that's the one side. So I've got to do the free motion embroidery. Now, I don't know what I'm going to do now. Like, I really liked Poppy's writing. Um, I can't remember what it said now, but it said something along here and then something along here. But because I've put my seagull here now, I've kind of wrecked that. So I don't know if I'm going to do any wording. Looking at it here, maybe whatever Poppy wrote, I can't quite remember now. Maybe I'll do that. Maybe in white. I think if I do, if I do decide to do any stitching with writing, I'm going. Uh, looking at it here, I'm making this decision now. I'm going to do it going round there and then finish off the sentence going round there. And this is my other one. Now what I'm doing, I follow an Instagram page. Um, they sell cups. Uh, they're in Cornwall. And they sell these cups and like things and jugs and things. And they're white with blue stripes. And I think they, so I don't know if it is a Cornish thing, but they associate with Cornish. So I did a drawing right, last night. And I drew, hopefully you can see this. Yeah, you can. I drew that right and then a river pasty i don't know what you think of that so on the other side i thought i'm going to do something about cornish pasties and a cup of, based on these cups on this instagram you can actually buy the real cups i don't own any these blue and white cups 
tops. So I've start, I've cut out my pieces. So here they are. I've got a handle and I've got some blue, I'm sorry about this, nothing stuck down, a blue stripe. And I've and I was going to embroider the the drink inside, but I've cut out some fabric. I had something suitable, some dark linen, and uh, yeah, so I've got a cup. Hopefully, you can get the gist of that. And this is my Cornish pastel. Bear in mind, obviously, I haven't done any embroidery on the picture, but that's how I've done the lettering so far. So it says, "Time for a pasty and a Cornish cuppa." And then this one, I decided to write. Now, I had a look at Poppy's and, and Poppy had put on the Life Boy beside the seaside on the Life Boy. I'll pop a photograph of that in. So I've, I've managed to squeeze in beside the seaside and then going up here in St Ives, look. And I'm really pleased. So all I've got to do now is just basically put some darker thread in and go wild with the embroidery. But I'm so delighted, I think, because I do holiday in St Ives because I'm married into a family that holiday there. So, you know, the, the seagulls and the pasties and St Ives, it's all a big thing for us. So uh, I think I'm going to be so proud to walk around with this bag in when I'm in St Ives. I think I'll be chuffed a bit. So thank you so much for joining me so far in this Friday Sews and I'll see you when um, I film some more. So thank you. See you in the next bit. Now welcome back to another part of my Friday Sews. Now I'm doing quite well this week. It's only Tuesday and I've actually finished my uh, Poppy to Fry project week six. Excuse me, I just need to scratch my face. I've been brushing one of my cats this morning uh, and he's a, lo a long haired cat, he's a rag doll and uh, he's the only one that he'll get, he's more likely to get a few knots so I've been like, trying to have a good old brush but I've been absolutely covered in hair but I have got changed but I had it on my eyeball and everything but I've met, I think I've managed to get, get it out of my eyeball or oh, I can't feel it, I'm not, I'm not too sure but never mind. I forgot to mention in the other bits of video I was wearing my Nina Lee South Bank sweater dress and today I've got my Billy sweater dress. I, I apologise beeping. I'm really, really sorry that you're having to put up with all this noise in my videos, but it's just the school and they just, I don't know why they have to beep all day long. I just really don't know. But the reason I'm filming now is I finished my bag. Now, I showed you the project this week. I'll pop another photograph on. So Poppy uh, designed this lovely bag with a life boy on it. And she said she wanted to keep the embroidery quite simple for us because she wanted to be kind because of the construction of the bag. But obviously you're free to do whatever you want. And uh, and, and, and I thought, well, there is a blank sock bag. Now I'm so glad I did because I've had so much fun. Now you've seen in my video, oh, sorry, I'm, I'm so itchy with these hairs everywhere, um, what I've been doing. Now uh, the bag is finished now there have been some issues right i'm absolutely delighted with my bag I'll, I'll show you now actually now i have already posted this in the group last night before i went to sleep and i just couldn't i was going to save sharing it on social media until i'd done friday so's but i've posted it on instagram this morning and it's gone over to face it will go over to facebook if i post it on there because i just couldn't help it so um because i try and kind of keep a thing, few things back from my videos but here it is <laughs> and I'm absolutely delighted with it so uh, I'm really pleased how um, you know this design has come out like you know my inspiration from the the Cornish artist and, uh, and I actually tagged her in my post and she's commented on it this morning so that was really nice because uh, my inspiration was from her her cups and things and I've my inspiration for the pasties you know like our holidays in Cornwall and the seagull um, was you know my inspiration because obviously seagulls play heavily on your holiday when you go to St Ives you know you you've got to watch 
you know, but they're always around, they've always got their eye on you and they're always trying to eat your food. So, you know, that. and if you very unlucky you'll be in a cottage right by the hill and if it's a certain time of year they'll be squawking all night and keep you awake so i have been on holiday and not had any sleep in cornwall because of seagulls and i've had a holiday in st ives i've got very little sleep because of younger people it was like main season young people um must be drinking in their cottages and then singing to all hours of the morning, you know. So, yeah, I have been unlucky sometimes <laughs> with my sleeping in St Ives. Because what it is, if you go to St Ives, what you find is, if you want to hear music while having a drink, go out on a Saturday night. Because if you want music on all the other nights, it's you're not likely going to get maybe Friday. There's, the, there's one bar on the front... You will get music every evening, but unless you're practically sitting on top of the bar, then you're not really going to hear it. If you go and sit on the other side, you can't even hear the music. So if you're a bit of a party animal, don't go to St Ives because you're not going to get a party. It's a relaxing family seaside holiday kind of thing. You'd have a drink, but you, you know, you're going to go to bed at a reasonable hour and you're not going to have had any music kind of thing, you know. If you want a party, go to Brighton. That You know what I'm saying? It's <laughs> a different kind of seaside holiday. So, yeah, I'm absolutely delighted with how this bag has come out. Now, the issues I've had... Because I marked all my placements with chalk, I've had a bit of trouble getting the chalk off. It is coming off and the, and it's starting to wear off. But I sprayed, because I'd done a set, I, I drew a cross here to mark my central point in chalk, right on the T and the Y of the pasty. And I, I've been spraying it and I rubbed it and the dye from the denim has ran into my TY. Now, I could have, before I constructed the bag, I probably could have just stitched over it again just to brighten it up. But do you know what? I, don't, I didn't think it looks too bad, really. I'm not... I'm not overly fussed and say if I get caught in rain. But I would... Do you know what? I'm going to have to make sure... I try, well, it's difficult, isn't it, with a British holiday to try and not go out when it's got really badly rain, you know, whatever. I'll take a brolly in my bag and if it starts chucking it down, put my brolly up, you know, kind of thing. So what I've advised people in the group, if they haven't made their bags already, I've advised them to... Uh, it, you know maybe zigzag their edges to stop the fraying and put their denim through the wash on a gentle wash uh just before they do their embroidery because you know it'd be a shame wouldn't it you know if someone's done all this to their bag and then you know and then it ends up getting wrecked with dye so yeah it's unfortunate so thank you for the lovely comments i've had so far uh, on social media about my bag yeah i've really enjoyed making this and not making it my own and yeah it's it's just lovely and it's that it it kind of holds a special place in my heart because it's somewhere i'll go on holiday so uh yeah so it's been uh, so i'm just wondering if there's anything i need to say about this bag oh now, in the uh, some people complained that their ticking fabric, the fabric that's inside, was too small. It wasn't tall enough for the bag, for the measurements that we were told it needed to be. Same as mine. Mine was also the same. So what I did, I'd already got some ticking fabric, so I just used my own and cut it to the size it was supposed to be. But Poppy has given the instructions in the group that if you're ticking, that, that noise i'm so sorry about all that noise out there if your ticking is too small what she's recommended is when you do your box corners don't measure that measurement eight centimeters measure it six centimeters but um i knew this already but i didn't bother doing it. even though i knew my ticking was too small i just did it the the size that she originally said because i knew i'd got more ticking over there so there you go so uh is there anything else i want to say about this i don't think so so all i want to say now about sewing as it's only tuesday and i've finished my poppy project already i've got a lot of the week left haven't i so i think dressmaking is a definite yes 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 uh, because i could clear my desk my desk isn't looking as bad as it was but i can clear my desk now and get some paper out and get a pattern out and uh yeah, I'll have a think about what. Do you know what? 
I think I might have a look at this. This pattern. The Sunny Dress for Knit Fabrics, the Friday Pattern Company. Yeah, I might look at this and I think I know what fabric. Right, bear with me. I might, I'll cut this bit. I'll keep filming. I'll cut this bit out. I've got this. I bought this this year, but I don't think I've shown it you actually. But it's just been sitting around. It's this lovely jersey. So this is what I'm thinking. What do you reckon? Jersey dress. Blue with pink stripes. Yeah, I think. Yeah. What it is, when I bought this uh, from So Jessie Lee, because I was she's had a discount code and i don't normally buy fabric with not a project in mind but i know how much i like stripy jerseys so i knew it, you know there'd be something i could make and um and you know agnes's and whatever you know and i do need more agnes tops but the other sunny day oh well, you can make this in a top so this is a friday pattern what i've got to say about it it does it basically it starts from bust sizes 32 to 33 and the xx large it goes up to 44 and 4 to 46 inch bust and a hip of 34 to 35 and a maximum hip of 46 to 49 but what you normally find with jersey and especially if you get a stretchier one um you kind of got a bit of play with it anyway have, have i put the stretch on this it says this is drafted for a five foot five, so I'll probably be taking half an inch off the length or more if I want it shorter. It doesn't. It doesn't say what stretch. So anyway, thank you so much, uh, and uh, well, I'll see you in the next bit. the final part of Friday sews. Now oh, I really hope this video goes okay. I've done a lot of filming in little bits and bobs this week and uh, I've got to try and put it all together but I might not be able to use it all so I'm going to try and whittle it down but then I've got to hope that it makes sense because if I mention something that I've mentioned already it might seem a bit weird but this is the final part anyway. I'm sorry if there was a little bit of wobble when I first pressed play but um, I'm not filming on my trial iPod. I'm filming on um, my claw, do you remember my claw that I bought that is not really not very good but I couldn't find my tripod so I think you're um, you're a little bit closer than usual so I don't know if it looks a little bit different but you might be able to see I've made my dress so uh, yeah I've literally just finished it I just finished hemming it and um, I haven't got any photographs to show you at the moment because I've literally I've just made it and put it on so uh, and it's and it's quite late it's Thursday and it's five um, in the evening so uh, I've planned everything I've peeled loads of potatoes and everything this morning for dinner I've got everything ready but um, I needed to cook some breaded I bought some frozen breaded chicken to put like in burgers and um, the the oven it just had a bit of stuff on the bottom and I just knew it was going to smoke the kitchen out if I tried to cook in it and the halogens packed in so it, and I was going to be doing the chips in the um the fryer do you know the um one of those air fryers it was like you know it it's got a paddle and it turns it round yeah but I couldn't cut the chicken so my husband said how about we get um take out tonight we'll grab some fast food and I've got the oven cleaning now it's a, it's a pyrolytic one you see yeah so you have to wait the the shortest thing is an hour and then you have to wait for it to click off so I thought yeah we're just gonna get a takeout tonight and what I was gonna cook tomorrow 
um, uh, tonight I'm going to cook tomorrow so yeah so um, what I forgot to say so you might have seen I've made something else as well if you follow me on social media you might have seen my headband and this is it and I got the idea from the Poppy to Fry uh, book her first book now I've since found out that book has gone out of print I've had it years and years and years and I'd never ever made anything out of it and the reason being is you have to increase the patterns the sizes so sometimes they're times four sometimes they're times three and this headband was size three now I've never been able to increase the size of patterns myself but the other night it was Tuesday night I was determined to increase a pattern so I did that and I was really pleased with myself hadn't intended on making the headband just yet I wanted to do some dressmaking as I said to you but I washed this fabric and let it dry overnight and in the morning it, because it, the way I'd got so much of it it was all folded it wasn't dry all the way through so while I was waiting oh, so I flipped it over on the dry too soon <laughs> yeah the dry too soon that didn't dry too soon and then um, I made the headband instead so um did I say I'll pop some photographs in if I haven't I'll pop them in I'll pop them in now and they're from Poppy's first book but I shared this make in the uh, private Poppy embroidery club group and a few people have been managing to purchase the book second hand so so if you're interested maybe have a dig around before they're all the second hand ones have gone because like I say it's gone out of print so yeah I've had a lovely time making this dress I really like how it's turned out I haven't really had a good old look at it yet now I ended up taking an inch off the length of the pattern just to um you know decide on my for my height but I did think it was still a little bit too long so I said to my husband what do you think where do you think I should have this come into so he put his finger on my leg I put a pin there and then when I cut the length off I allowed for half an inch seam allowance because that's what the pattern said so I ended up cutting off three and a half inches so uh, for, I'm five foot four and I've ended up in total with the the inch I took off and this um four and a half inches I've had but it does look a bit short and I'll stand up I'll see if you can see what you think I'll, ha I'll take some photos yeah it does it does look a bit short but you know what it's called the um the sunny day uh, no, the sunny dress. Sunny dress. Oh, and do you know what me saying? You can have it as a top. Basically, I've done the cap sleeve and you can have it with a longer sleeve as well. And what I found out, and do you know it's kind of like shaped like this? I could have had, I didn't notice here, you can actually have the hem shaped on the dress as well. So what I know, I thought, well, is this going to be longer? But if I'd have done the shaped hem, it would have been uh, the same length, but the shaped hem would have come up a little bit more at the side. So I'm kind of glad, actually, that I didn't do that one, because then if I'd have wanted to shorten it, it would have made it a bit strange wouldn't it so yes that's what I, so it was really lovely uh things that i did to the pattern that it didn't tell you to is i put some um tape in i say tape see this cotton ribbon i cut a length of that and then I cut it down the length so it was at half the thickness and I've put that in at the shoulders just to stabilize the shoulders and and I've made it all on my sewing machine I didn't even bother with my overlocker and I didn't even bother with my cover stitch machine I literally used a lightning bolt which is kind of like a narrow zigzag stitch throughout the whole thing and I did I haven't it doesn't tell you to top stitch the um the neck band down uh, which I haven't done but it doesn't seem to need it it seems okay um and I've done even done that stitch on the top all the way around uh, yeah I just was just was in the flow on my sewing machine and I just didn't feel like you know venturing off to my other machines I just this depends on how it and as well with my cover stitch machine um I have I don't think I've got blue thread I've got grey and cream and white 
maybe black. I don't think I've got blue. So it, or the, or pink. I don't think either. So yeah, I just I just kept it as it is. So yeah, I'm going to photograph this over the weekend, and then I suppose uh, yeah. So I hope you like what you've seen this week. Um, I hope you know you've seen something of interest and uh, you know if you've got any questions about anything that I haven't mentioned then please feel free to ask me and uh, and I'll see you next week thank you for watching bye